It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Okay, basketball fans, with me, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm Ernie Johnson. You're watching 2K Sports, but you know that already. And tonight, our broadcast will be shifting to Minneapolis, where we'll see the Timberwolves going up against the Atlanta Hawks. For Atlanta, it's been all about winning games right now. Over the first half of the season, we've gotten a good sense of what this team is capable of. When they're on, which they have been consistently, they are an excellent unit. And for Carl Anthony Towns, just last season, GMs voted him the player they'd most like to build a team around. Shaq, I can't think of higher praise than that. That's because Big Cats is a perfect example of the modern-day center. Can do it all, Ernie, on both ends of the floor. I really like his game. I I agree. He's a terrific scorer on three levels, you know. And that's pretty impressive. He can do it on the box, the mid-range, and the three-ball, Ernie. Yes, he He has a lot of years left in him. He can make a big impact. I probably would want to start a team with him as well. Kevin Harlan will have the call. Game's about to start. We'll see y'all later. The crowd is assembled here at the Target Center in Minneapolis looking for the Timberwolves to have a victory here on their home floor. And we've got it for you live, right here on 2K Sports. Along with Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and Hall of Famer David Aldridge, Kevin Harlan. Boy, do we have a treat for you folks. The big ticket is here! Kevin Garnett in the house. KG, welcome. Man, a lot of people don't know that you actually gave me the name, the big ticket. Dude, K-Hard, man, I hope man, I hope you got a package of all this somewhere. I hope you own all the names that you've given over the years. You are the big ticket still. Great to have Kevin Garnett. Last outing for Minnesota, they won that game against the Bulls in Chicago. I tell you what, uh, how efficient they were at scoring the basketball, especially for an away game, that was impressive. Yeah, I don't think it's ever easy playing on the road, obviously, but that night they were really in rhythm, shot the ball with such ease and confidence. And before we get going, let's hear from David Aldridge John on the sideline. David? Well, guys, the work ethic of Wolves coach Tom Thibodeau is very well known. Now, back in Chicago, Jimmy Butler would try to beat him to practice. But no matter how early Butler arrived, Tibbs was already there. Finally, Butler said, OK, forget it. I can't beat him. So I'm just going to run through a wall for him. Kevin? Thanks, David. And Doc Rivers, your coach with the Celtics, such a great leader, brought your team together. Talk about that. You know, he brought us uh, the belief from Mbutu and, and bringing uh, all of us together and, hmm. and that you give yourself for the greater of the group. And everybody bought into that. And when you hear about when Miami won, uh, Pat Riley had all those guys give something to the pot and giving yourself to something. And when you think about what team is, all these great coaches, these great minds, these great philosophers, it all surrounds that whole little philosophy right there, giving yourself to be able to get something and gain something. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. interesting. But a true philosophy in winning. Tip-off goes to Minnesota. A look at Atlanta's opening lineup. Young and Bazemore team up in the backcourt. And it's Prince outside at the three with Collins down at the power forward. And it's Len in at the center filling out the middle. And for Atlanta, they come in off a good outing against the Pacers. Bazemore passes to Prince. Here's Collins. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. And so it's Teague with it. He'll bring it up for the Timberwolves. Outside, Towns. Here's Wiggins. Misses off the right iron. Here's Atlanta. Down low. Lenka kicks it to Bazemore. And poor shot selection there. Not a high percentage look for him. To the paint. Butler finds Teague. And here's Wiggins. Six on the shot clock. The kick outside to Butler. Another miss by Minnesota. Prince outside. 
And here in the first, closing in on two minutes played. Tries it from 19. Yep, it counts. For Minnesota, they've gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. T kicks to Towns. And he finishes nicely on the layup. And KG, as many points as you scored in your career, how much pride did you take in your defensive play? You know, I like to think that uh, it's respected. You know, um, I, I didn't play. I like to think that when I got to Boston, I made more of a added effort to play defense. You know, in Minnesota, I had such a responsibility on the offensive side that um, you don't ever save you yourself. Did, yes. You don't. You don't save yourself in anything. But I would have to find ways of uh, when I come out of the game. Uh, you know, immediate ice uh, stuff. You know, stuff that I could use to try to you know get any type of rest. I know Flip was going to use me in two or three uh, minute segments, so I would probably have three to four minutes. Of rest and they have to get right back out but when I got to Boston obviously we had a deeper team a better team and uh, Doc Rivers uh, did a great job I felt like of uh, listening to me uh, I was listening to my body but more importantly we have offensive scores I wanted to be more of the head of of, uh, of our defense I wanted to be the one to be talking Rondo and I had a immediate chemistry with that um, it was something that it was natural between the two of us and uh, I think everybody else followed. Uh, Tibbs threw some uh, schemes on top of some of the stuff that we was able to bring. Doc was open to some of the different ideas uh, scheme-wise. And the rest is history. Next thing you know, Cleveland is really running out stuff. LeBron goes to Miami. Now Miami's running out stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Next thing you know, Miami beats us with our stuff. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's evolution. Right. It's evolution. Oh, no, it's evolution, man. If I sit here and go through it and you sit, sit back and go and watch it, you're like, holy snap. They, mm -hmm. Wow, it's the same look. They're bringing the guy over, post up. Yeah, so, you know, shout out to everybody and, and us innovative and, and bringing that defense and shout to Tibbs. Right. Now, here's Bazemore. He's coming off a 19-point game against Indiana. And don't let his defensive work get passed over. With all his steals, he was just as valuable on D as he was at the other end. Boy, hitting for good percentage here in the first quarter. He's doing what he can to get his team off on the right foot. Now, here's Teague. No points in the game yet for him. Towns, the pass to Teague. Banked in off the glass. Well, you've got to be able to focus inside. And Teague will not be denied when he's that close to the rim. Teague against Young. No good on that one. And Minnesota now the other way. And you see the floor spacing that's in fashion these days in the league. Kevin, if you were just coming into the NBA right now, would you be more inclined to work on your three-point shot? I think so. I think if you are a stretch four, if you're a three, or even if you're a five now, you have to be able to shoot the three consistently, mm -hmm. whether it's in the corners or at the top. You have to be able to show that you can stick the three ball. I think a lot more small ball is going on now. I think a lot of teams are have reverted to uh, the Golden State speed and the pace up type of style now. If I was a rookie coming into the game, I would definitely have to have some confidence in shooting the three ball and some consistency in making it. Minnesota shooting their first free throw of the night. One shot. One shot. The free throw drops for Towns. Make no mistake, Carl Anthony Towns has all the skills necessary to be amongst the best players in the league. What a problem he poses for defenses, guys. Back to Bazemore. Young against T. Shots good from Young. Young's got his first bucket of the night. Such a creative ball handler. Young has an ability to carve out room for himself with his dribble. Teague with the ball, and Young picks him up defensively. Here's Wiggins, and again it's Minnesota converting. So it's the Hawks now. This, their first chance to take a look at Minnesota this season. Yeah, it should be an interesting matchup tonight. These two teams will only face off twice all season. Well, so you want to make these opportunities count, right? Since they don't see each other often, it's going to be an intriguing battle. 
right there. You, you see it. Young's ability to operate out of that pick and roll, very advanced for a player of his age. Pass to Towns. Shoots over Len. Towns, no luck. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Buries it from three-point range. Uh, just a threat to score off the dribble. Young is crafty at assessing the defense and exploiting them. Outside, Towns. Butler on the way. He's covered by Bazemore. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Butler. And that nickname, the big ticket. It stuck. And it certainly fit. KG, you were the big ticket. Lord knows I, I owe you for that one, man. But you were the big ticket. Where'd you get that from, man? You know, I don't you, even know. You know you, man, listen. But that do you like of all the nicknames you have, and you've got some, yes. but, but do you like that as well as any listen, of you got? Listen, it's a, it has morphed now. I am the ticket. So the ticket, my yeah, friend, right. My, from my friends come to me and they ask me, Teron Lou, he don't call me. He's he hasn't called me Kevin since you've been calling me the big ticket. Uh, yeah, everybody calls me Tick. Yeah. How about that? All the young guys, I don't even think they know my name. There's no Ticket. 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 Tick. Hey, Tick. Right, so that's what it is. You are the big ticket still. Lynn with it, and Rose picks him up defensively. And we can look quickly at a group of rookies having a very good run. The top scoring first-year players in the NBA for the past 10 games. Trey Young on top. And, you know, they've given him some more responsibility offensively. In these past two weeks, he's responded. The Hawks shooting their first free throws of the game on this trip to the line. And, and they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. The first one falls. Well, Kevin, how about the Harvard grad, Jeremy Lin? How far has this guy come from nearly out of the NBA at one point to viable NBA starter? Incredible. Here's what Atlanta's going with right now. Dwayne Dedman's checked in for John Collins. And it's Justin Anderson in for Torian Prince. Both free throws good from Lin. Timberwolves trail by 11. So the Timberwolves right called their first timeout. And not surprising. Obviously Pardon? unhappy with the lack of response from his team. And I think, Greg, he just has to get them on the same page. With this kind of lax defensive effort, something has got to change. Checking out the numbers for Young. A wonderful string of games he's put together here lately. Averaging 32 points, four assists, and three rebounds. He has been terrific throughout, putting up some huge numbers offensively. Well, and this is exactly who he is, a flat-out scoring machine. You plug him in and let him go to work. And there's a whistle. That goes on Jeremy Lin. That is his first foul of the game. Outside, Jones. Dang dishes to Rose. Shot to stop the run. He takes it up and lays it in. Rose has got his first two points of the night. KG, you had so much success as a high school player. In fact, you were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. How about that, huh? How about I can see the picture in my mind's eye right now. Kev, that fell in my lap, man. That wasn't something that I was striving for, but who doesn't want to be on the cover oh. of anything? And nonetheless, SI, and um, I was more than uh, giddy-eyed and glitz or whatever you want to call it. Listen, very special moment for me. A lot of people don't know you have to get permission to be in certain neighborhoods and, and, and we got permission to be in be in the neighborhood we got to shoot it right there in front of Farragut which is very dear to me because of the transformation and the stuff that I have been through and where I was at you know that's a I hold Farragut a very 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 special place in my heart so it was important for me to have it on the cover and there's the foul it's on Dwayne Dedman that's his first foul Vince Carter who's checked in for Atlanta Okogi, he's covered by Anderson. No coverage that time. Atlanta leading by 10. 
Carter kicks to Dedman. Outside, Lynn. No good on the triple. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. Outside, Jones. At the top of the key, Jang. And there's the foul. It's on Dwayne Dedman. That's foul number two for him. Well, and guys, that's what he wanted to avoid. A second foul before the end of the opening period. Rose finds Jones. Pocket six. The pass to Jang. And they've done a nice job controlling the defensive backboard to start this game. To the inside. Vince Carter the bucket on the assist by Anderson. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. And so it's Rose bringing it up for the Timberwolves. A 12-point game. Rebound Atlanta. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on it. And Kevin, you talk about your rivals at that big man position. Who comes to mind among guys you played against and have the most respect for? I got a lot of respect for guys in our league. Shaq, Rasheed Wallace, Dice, Charles Barkley, Carmelo, you know, to name a few. Chris Weber. Yeah. A ton of respect. But when it comes to the cream and the cream, you know, Rasheed Wallace mm -hmm. and Tim Duncan always brought out another side of me. I would say Chris Webber, too, you know, because Chris Webber is my idol. Um, and those guys brought out the better side of me. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that I dug deeper with those guys and playing up against those guys. If you want to see what you are in this league and all that stuff that you've been practicing and working on in the, in the gym, those players, those moments are going to pull those times out of you. And that's what true essence are. And only the elite understand that. Only the elite understand the matrix when things slow down and you really are dominating the game on both ends. Different world. Different world, different flow, different mindset, different type of character. Now, here's Deadman after the miss by Lou all day. Herter can't hit the free throw line jump. Uh, a team's rebounding is a great measure of its energy, and theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. And he gets the whistle for the three-second call. And where the shot's been coming from tonight? Here's a look broken down by paint, mid-range, and three-point shot attempt so far for Minnesota. And, and when you look at that chart, concentrate for a second on what they're not doing. They're not getting a lot of threes from the corners. That, that's something that has to change. Makes it much easier to defend the team when you know they can't score from the corner. Now here's Lynn. Against Indiana, he was really on his game. Herter, and he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Gotta admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. That free throw missing. Good on the second free throw. Timberwolves trail by 15. Jones kicks to Zhang. Rose gets a wide open look. Off target from outside. And it's the Hawks ball. They're on a 20 to seven run. The Hawks again can't hit. Minnesota's gone one of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. Jones, the pass to Jang. Dang, looking it over. Four on the clock. Jang dishes to Dang. Sweet little floater. 
Tang's got his first basket. Oh, such a field shot there, the floater. The Hawks leading by 13. Up top, Lynn. He's covered by Rose. Rose against Lynn. That shot missing. And so it's Atlanta looking at a 13-point lead heading into the next quarter. And their ability to get points in the paint has made all the difference in this one. Right back after this break. remember Vince Carter traded on draft night for his college teammate Antoine Jameson but he talked about that crazy exchange so as I'm sitting back there he's like there's been a trade you know Toronto Raptors and Golden State make a trade for Antoine James and Vince Carter right there so our families are sitting right next to each other so they're fixing the hat and all of a sudden it's like all right here's your hat all right give us that hat move forward so it was just the weirdest thing the fifth and sixth picks in the draft, both of them went on to great careers. And draft day trades happen all the time, but being traded for your college teammate, a uh, pick apart, that, that's pretty unique. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And guys, we've seen the Hawks really take control here through that first one uh, they've turned this thing into a track beat I'll tell you they've simply been more assertive in the open floor they're leaking out early converting with confidence all fueled up and ready to go let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going on the court for Minnesota we've got Derek Rose Gorgie Dang is out there with Dang then it's Jones here's Carter down it goes for his third basket in as many tries. Yeah, I'm not sure the defenders were anticipating that kick out there, and he wound up with a wide open look on the J. And Zhang kicks to Rose. Back to Zhang. Outside, Jones. Shoots over Lin, and the shot is long. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Kevin, we know the big markets offer more opportunities than just basketball. Does that make it impossible for small market teams, you think, to compete? I think that as long as you have dollars in the market, yes, you can be competitive. I think that uh, your GMs have to actually put forth some work and put forth uh, teams. If you got to find what hoops of guys work together and then go out and try to foresee that. I think in a game where you're dealing with cash and dealing with being able to have uh, ability to sign and trade players in this league, I think that you can make a competitive roster. It's no... There's no mishaps on There's what There's enough you can money do. around. Is it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And player movement is more than ever now. You know, players are not doing five to six year deals no more. Players are doing two years. Yes. Um, so yeah, you can definitely make a competitive roster. Now here's Dang, Okogi, and once again off the mark by Minnesota. Boy, I'll tell you, still looking for that first three of the second quarter. He had one to open this game in the first. Carter against Jones. Knocked loose. Here is Carter. He has six. From deep three-point range. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Anthony Tolliver. He's checked in for Minnesota. And a switch here also for Atlanta. Collins is checked in. Timberwolves trailed by 19. Minnesota calls timeout. And his guys are getting frustrated. Coach just really kind of needs to calm them down. I think, Greg, they've got to continue to believe that the next shot is going to go in. He can hopefully communicate that effectively to them. So both teams making some changes here. A moment here to see some stats for Butler. Just an incredible month of basketball. Averaging 25 points per, almost two and a half steals and four rebounds. He has been at his most dynamic, no question about it, a real handful. 
let's make no mistake, one of the elite talents in the NBA and operating at the highest level right now. Teague finds Butler. Trying to end the drought, and it's good on the way in. Butler's got his second basket. Well, the confidence that Jimmy Butler displays on a nightly basis is awesome. This guy, as an interior scorer, is a force. Poked away and stolen by Jeff T. And a wide open look here for Wiggins. Money from the wing. Now Lynn, one of the dependable scorers on the team. He's averaging close to 17 points a game. And Kevin, you think about all the individual accolades you won, the MVP, the Defensive Player of the Year award. Where does the title NBA champion rank on your personal list? Being an NBA champion is everything. If I didn't win any of the, any of that individual stuff, I would be totally, totally fine with just being the NBA champion. <laughs> and the Hawks making a change here. Young's checked in, knocked away, and stolen by Butler. Passes to Teague, takes the three. Atlanta with the rebound. Deadman's got rebound number seven for him tonight. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Oh, just a picture perfect alley oop. You, you gotta love that. A, one, a little surprise, Greg. He didn't go for the big slam, but it works just the same. Now here's Teague. He averages more than 12 points a game. That's some dependable production. And the shot goes in. Well, so effective with that jump shot. Carl Anthony Towns is a problem on the offensive end. And Young kicks to Deadman. Pass to Prince. Andrew Wiggins pulls it in. Well, they get it to the high percentage area, and then it all goes wrong from there. Top of the key, Tolliver. Back to Teague. Towns high post. Timberwolves passing it around. Just five on the clock. But three drills the three-pointer. Towns has got ten. And good passing. Setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Young passes to Prince. He kicks to Bazemore. Teague against Young. Out left to the wing. From past the arc, that one falls through. It's his sixth make from the floor this game. Now six for ten. Well, I'll tell you, he's been a go-to guy for them as they've taken this lead, and he keeps coming. Teague with the ball, and Young picks him up defensively. Wiggins with it. Edmonds there. And it's Wiggins missing. That's just superb interior defense, not allowing him a free run to the rim. Prince kicks to Young. Back to Prince. In the corner, Baysmore with it. Fires from the wing, and they get it back. Timberwolves trail by 15 to the middle. And it's Towns missing. Young in the corner. And it's good for two. Time out, time out. And this is why Young is so dangerous. He just gets that shot off so fast before the defense can react. Minnesota calls timeout. Without question, Trey Young displaying his skills today. Well, I think during this timeout, they've got to talk about ways to deny the basketball to him. That's the key, because when he gets it, chances are he's going to score. Alex Lenz checked in for Dwayne Dedman. And so it's Teague with it. He'll bring it up for the Timberwolves. Trailing by 17. Here's Towns. That's good. And so Teague with the assist. That's 12 points for Carl Anthony Towns. Boy, you can't pin their struggles today on him. He's been on fire from the field. Young taking his time here. Cans it from downtown. That's number two for him from long range in the quarter. His third overall. T kicks to Butler. Down low. Rebounded by the Hawks. 
Lange got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Pass to Young. Baysmore on the wing. A second chance effort. He takes it up and lays it in. Baysmore's got five points so far. And without looking at the scoreboard, you think they were the team trailing and trying to fight their way back. T kicks to Tolliver. Left side, Towns. From beyond the arc, Teague can't hit. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Wiggins against Prince. The kick out to T. Here's the teardrop. Lynn with the block. And Kev, you see the agility of Alex Lynn in good position for the spot. Here's Teague. I'll tell you, I hate to say it, but he's been dragging them down all night. The effort's there, but he continues to be ice cold. And it's Young, that time on the assist by Prince. Young's got 10 points in the quarter. And having to respect Young's deep range defensively, hard to close off the lane. Can they get it? And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. Alex Len picks one up. Two shots, gentlemen. Two. The Timberwolves made their only other free throw attempt today in an earlier trip to the line. Taking two shots. And he makes the first. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. The Hawks leading by 20. Young outside, kicks it to Collins. Now the pass to Bazemore, over Butler. Will not go, this is off the front iron. Boy, what a tough night. Imagine what their lead would be if he were having a better night from the field. All right, starting to heat up now. He's been much more efficient with the shot in this quarter than in the first. Atlanta's gotten cold from deep in the second quarter, just two of six from long range. Back to Young. Baysmore passes to Prince. He can't get it to go. Wiggins with some nice D. Butler against Baysmore. Butler dishes to Tolliver. Wiggins outside. Puts it up from 12. No good that time. And it's the Hawks taking it the other way. 22 is their biggest lead. Following this one, they get to host the Cavaliers. That game is the first and last of their homestead. As off as he's been this quarter, it's not helping them to trim the deficit. Young finds Bazemore. Towns with the defensive effort. And one thing I liked in the first quarter was their aggressiveness to draw the contact, putting the defense on the defensive. And the call will be against Alex Land. And that'll be his third foul so far. Jang, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. Rose comes in for T. The dunk and the foul, a powerhouse move, and he's got a chance for one more at the line. Alex Len picks one up. Oh, that's a strong finish, and Carl Anthony Towns will go to the line, try to put the cherry on top. 
He's made all three of his free throws so far. Atlanta making a switch here. Carter's checked in. Shooting one. The free throw drops for Towns. And so Young will bring it up for the Atlanta Hawks. The lead is 15. They defeated Indiana in their last game. Yeah, and fortunately for them, I, I thought the opponent's defense just never showed up. I mean, you'd have to question their effort, Greg. They did a great job at penetrating and kicking out. The defense simply wasn't up to the task. So it's the Timberwolves now. After the miss from Trey Young. Back to Towns. Shot clock at five. But they'll get another chance. On its way from Rose for two. Doesn't go for him. KG, I wanted to give you a special thanks for joining us, helping us with the call tonight. Uh, you always have a seat at this table to broadcast any of our games. Oh, man, thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me come through, man. It was an honor, man, seriously. We'll do it again soon. Let me know, man. That's Let me KG. Know. That's, the, that's the great Kevin Garnett. My dog. And always a special occasion to have KG with us, Doris, a guy who really brings it every time we speak with him. Well, his enthusiasm is contagious. This guy is a leader on and off the court. There's a vibrancy, a joy that he brings that was key to his success as a player and how fun as a broadcaster. Jeremy Lin, he's checked in for the Hawks. Out of bounds, Minnesota takes possession. Here's what the Minnesota Timberwolves have lined up on their schedule. On Sunday, they'll be facing Hassan Whiteside and the Miami Heat. Then on Monday, they'll be facing Drew Holiday and the New Orleans Pelicans. And for their matchup with the Celtics, you know they want to come out and make a big statement in that one. It won't be easy, but anything can happen. Now here's Towns. He's coming off a 28-point game against Chicago. And guys, he was also huge on defense, turning away two shots and altering countless more. 40 seconds left in the first half. The dish to Lynn. Rose with the block. 23 seconds left in the second quarter. And he drops it in from the low post. Rose has got four this quarter. And that is one of Derrick Rose's signature moves. May not be as fast as he once was, but boy, that explosive first step remains. Here's Lynn. Softly drops in the floater. And the Hawks lead by 13. And with that one, it ends in an 11-0 run by the Timberwolves. And so we wrap up the first half. It's Atlanta. They lead by 13. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Andrew, they shot the lights out in the first half. What has to change? Uh, get back. You know, focus on getting back, guarding your man. Uh, and I'll take these real. It starts with a man-on-man -man challenge. Thank you. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, for that interview. And we'll see you back here after the break for third quarter basketball. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, folks. Welcome back. This is Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal at 2K Sports. Let's talk first half. We saw Trey Young lighting it up in the first half. He had 21 points, three rebounds, and one assist. And Shaq, what are your thoughts on how Atlanta played? What stood out to me more than anything else was how hard they got after it on the offensive glass. They were keeping possessions alive and converting those rebounds into points. Take away those extra points, they're not in this position, Ernie. Kenny, let's get your input on the Timberwolves. Their inaccuracy from behind the arc was brutal. Shot selection, I didn't see any. The perimeter offense they're running, you could scrap that. They need to get back to the basics. Pound it inside, more pick and roll. Try to pick up some easy buckets in transition.
And that's going to do it for us here. The second half of action is coming your way. The buildings of downtown Minneapolis all lit up on this lovely evening. Welcome back, everyone, to the Twin Cities. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. It's been one outstanding game from Trey Young. And they haven't needed a lot of shots to get their points. Just tremendous efficiency here in the first half. I think you can look to specifically the patience and the shot creation. Really solid effort. Of course, when you look at point guards now, lots of combo skills, but there aren't as many guys with a pass-first mindset maybe that we've seen in the past. Right, and it's a great point, Kevin, because increasingly you've got to be able to have guys at all five positions who are willing to score, or it certainly enhances your ability to win. If you are a pass-first mindset and really put scoring at a secondary level of importance, you've got to do it at such a high level. And I'm talking about guys like Rajon Rondo, Ricky Rubio, Lonzo Ball, all are men who have such a high degree of passing acumen that they can take a step back scoring-wise and still affect winning. Great examples. Checking out the group for Lloyd Pierce to start the second half. The big men are Collins and Dedman. Young and Bazemore team up in the backcourt, and it's Prince in at the three. Now here's Bazemore. And here is Deadman. Inside, shot clock at six. Baysmore misses. Timberwolves trail by ten. Young with the steal. It's Prince on the wing, covered by Wiggins. Here's Young, and two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. It's on Jeff Teague. And for Trey Young, it's a little unfair that he's already being compared to Steph Curry. Scouts are always going to look for comparisons, and I'm not saying Young is Curry, but many of the strengths and weaknesses are similar. The, the size and athleticism, the insane range, and both have that it factor. And that one falls for Young. And, of course, all the comparisons to Steph Curry. Young just trying to be the best version of himself. And we've already seen the upside. Lens checked in for Dwayne Dedman. And so Young nails them both. And I'll tell you, Trey Young, go big or go home. Always gives you 100% as competitive as they come. And the young fella wants to win so badly, sometimes that emotion really comes out. Here's Young after the made shot from Carl Anthony Towns. Prince kicks it to Bazemore. To the inside, Len, and the layup falls. Lens got six. And you know, Greg, it's amazing. The impact Young makes, especially, of course, on the offensive end. High-level shot maker, a, a threat the moment he crosses half court. Instinctive playmaker, just needs to play more within himself and avoid overdriven. Here's Teague following the bucket by the Hawks. A three-pointer is right on target. They wanted a fast start coming out of the break, and they are now three for three. Young passes to Prince. Young outside. Boy, what a cold start to the second half for them. Just one for four from the field so far. It's good. And the Hawks lead is cut to just seven points in the basket from town. Well, a point guard must understand window of opportunity, and Jeff Teague specializes in exactly that. Young dishes to Prince. Baysmore for three. Wiggins with the rebound. Wiggins has got his seventh rebound here tonight. Not how they hope to start the second half, missing four of their first five here. But only the first miss of the second half. They've come out here with authority. Yep, that one goes. Eight points for Alex Len. 
That kept good defense, but Len with too much height and length to be affected by it. Teague finds Towns. Down low, and Towns throws it down. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Yeah, and an example of why you want to let the game come to you. The opening presented itself, he converted in a big way. So it's Atlanta now, after the basket by Minnesota. Young's shot is off. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. Well, if he wasn't there, that shot's going in. Love the effort on the defensive end. Now here's Teague. He's got five. Feeds it to Butler. Makes the bucket. Now he's got five field goals. Five for eight in the game. Boy, Butler took a pretty good hit there, but has the strength and the coordination to finish it. That's pretty. And Young kicks to Len. Some solid defense from Butler. Now the Timberwolves with it. They're on a 14-6 run. And Trey Young gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Jones checked in for T. Jeremy Lin, he's checked in for Atlanta. Higgins outside. Passes it to Jones. He kicks it to Butler. Fades back. And it's wide right. It's off the rim. And got to like what they've been doing down low in the post. Pass to Bazemore. Back to Young. Got a piece of it. It's stolen by Jones. On up the court. And slam dunk by Butler. Well, that's the level of tenacity that Jimmy Butler brings to the game. Finishes through contact as well as anyone, maybe short of LeBron James. And Jimmy Butler's a very physical wing, as we know. Greg goes about 6'8", 240, and he can D up almost any position. And the strength to deal with forwards, the quickness to cover guards. Also, he uses that strength to attack the rim and get himself to the line. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. A free throw drop for Butler. In Adoras for a long time, few people realized how efficient the three-point shot can be, the extra point making such a difference. Uh, why do you think it took a while for that thought process to hold? Well, I think obviously we have advanced metrics, and the reason we have advanced metrics is there are more ways to monitor the things that happen between the lines, right? There are cameras everywhere. We can track people's data uh, via computer programs. But I think one of the interesting things to me, Kevin, is that Steph Curry really has changed the logistics of what defines a quality shot. Here's a guy who steps across half court, and when he does, he's in range. So the influence of Steph Curry cannot be understated. Great example. Atlanta's has gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. Young passes to Baseball. Lynn from long range. A rebound by the Timberwolves. That is fantastic defense on one of the best three-point shooters in the league. Didn't give him an inch of room. Boy, he has exploded. You couldn't ask for a better quarter from a guy. And here's Young. He'll bring it up for Atlanta. A two-point game. Pass to Len. And he can't stop the run as he misses. Minnesota's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Baysmore against Wiggins. Pulls up on the elbow. High post shot. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. And it's a four point Minnesota lead. Atlanta is shooting for the game at 42%. Time they can use out. a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Atlanta calls timeout. Well, Greg, for Atlanta, it was out with the old and in with the new for the point guard position for the Hawks. And Hawks were able to trade down and still get the guy they wanted in, in Young. See him as an impact guard to build around for the future. 
had to move Schroeder to free up space for Young, but this team now has a clear core to build around. Gorgie Dangs checked in for Minnesota. Rose comes in for Andrew Wiggins. Then for the Hawks, Justin Anderson, he's checked in for Kent Bazeman. And it's Carter in for Young. Boy, I'll tell you, it takes a lot of confidence to go with the floater. That is not as easy as it looks. Now here's Rose. He has six. Back to Jang over Prince. The rebound by Anderson. The Hawks trail it. Carter outside. The pass to Lynn. Pulls from the top of the key. That one goes in. Lynn's got six points. Love watching Lynn shoot the basketball. His ability to consistently drain jumpers so valuable. Jones against Lynn. Jones finds Butler. Over in the corner, Rose. Just five on the clock. And that one, good. Eight points for him. And after a first half in which their offense shot under 40%, they've got the lead, and they should count themselves to be lucky. Now here's Len. He's got eight. In the corner, it's Lynn. Over Rose. And the Hawks getting another basket right there. Uh, you have to enjoy watching Jeremy Lynn work the pick and roll. This guy totally loses the defense with his quick decision making. Rose looking around. Butler against Anderson. Shots good from Butler. Butler's got 14 points now in the second half. Boy, what has gotten into him? He's taken his game to an unreal level this quarter. Back to Prince. Well, we know this. Jeremy Lin knows how to run an offense. His ability to find the open man uncanny. And that Unleash Chaos replay presented by Under Armour. Hover Havoc giving us a chance to relive that exciting play. Yep, it counts. 25 points for Carl Anthony Towns. And I love the momentum he's building. Last game, he, he was just as dominant. Well, there's no doubt this guy's on a hot streak right now. That's why he keeps getting the ball in this one. They're like, hey, we're going to feed the hot hand. Now here's Lynn. It's Prince on the wing. Jang defending, and he gets it to go. And it's eight points for Torian Prince. And, and since halftime, this has become an intense ball game. They are getting after it hard. It has become a real battle out there. Towns, no luck. Yeah, affecting the shot in a big way there. Excellent defense. Well, you talk about getting into the space of the shooter. This is how you defend the paint. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. And here is the shot chart as we see how things are going for Butler. And what a big-time game we've seen from him. He's been the one looking to create and get a shot each trip down the floor. Every time a shot falls, his confidence just grows and grows. Just an all-around tremendous offensive showing. Here's Towns. Another miss by Towns. And that's the shot you want to create. They just can't get it to fall. Well, certainly a disappointing result, but they'll live with the shot. Uh, you know, they'll take that every time. Now here is Carter. He's got six. Anderson outside for the lead. He's off on that one. The Timberwolves go the other way with it. They get to take on the Heat at Miami after this one. And that one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. Butler outside Towns. Back to Butler. Over Anderson. Rebound Atlanta. Prince has got his fourth rebound in this one. And Carter has it in the corner. It's stolen by Jones. Outside Butler. To the middle. Here's Towns. The shot's good on the assist by Butler. Butler's got his third assist on the night. And here's Lynn. He'll bring it up for Atlanta. Passes it to Lynn. 
Over Towns. Good on the 13-footer. Lynn's got it all tied up now for Atlanta. Man, he's having quite the quarter, converting at a really high percentage. Here's Rose. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. And unfortunately, injuries will always be the concern with Derrick Rose. Still loves the game of basketball, knows he is limited compared to what he once was. Amazing with all he's fought through, he can still perform at such a high level. Shooting two. First one falls for. Boy, what a roller coaster career it has been for Derrick Rose. One time league MVP, now just trying to fit in with the rest of his guys. This is not an easy transition. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. I think it's best to avoid putting this guy at the line if possible, but that's obviously easier said than done. Outside, Lynn. Just five to shoot. Stolen by Rose. Okogi. Kept alive. Pass to Jang. To the left side wing. Teague with a clean look. Another miss by Minnesota. Here's Carter. And Vince Carter with the slam. And you know Carter is taking off on the drive. When he has a head of steam like that, he's looking to tear off the rim. Just three on the clock. And the layup is good. Five points in the game. Absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice, subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. And to me, that's all about the body control, right, Greg? I mean, he does such a stellar job sizing up his man and drains it despite having the size on him. It's been all about Carl Anthony Towns for Minnesota. What a quarter that saw them generate a great comeback effort and are now out in front with momentum behind them. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. And a quick look now at the State Farm assist of the game. Uh, just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball. And how about the perfect delivery? We call that, Greg, putting it right in the pocket. And he knew what to do with it once it was there. We've reached the fourth quarter, and what has been a very competitive game should be an exciting finish. Minnesota in the lead. We've got Anthony Tolliver. Derrick Rose is out there with Teague. Then it's Gorgie Dang. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Now here's Teague. Tight defense on him. Back to Tolliver. Left side, Rose. Four on the clock. Pulls it from the elbow. Rebounded by the Hawks. Herter, Teague covering, to the paint. Here's Deadman, and Deadman throws it down. And really, after trailing the entire game, they've got to be feeling good about evening things up. Oh, it got ugly there for a stretch. Nothing was working, but they've come back and have a chance to seal the deal. the free throw is good now leading by one 
And Doris, the Wolves, a lot of promise, but how do they deliver? I think Tom Thibodeau says it best, Kevin. It's the little things. The magic is actually in the work you put in every day. No shortcuts, no easy way out. There's a price to be paid for winning in the NBA. That's a huge three-pointer. He'd love to become a go-to guy for them here in crunch time. Yeah, and when he gets going, he adds another dimension to their offense that can make a huge difference when the game's on the line. Lynn's shot is off. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. Well, if he wasn't there, that shot's going in. Love the effort on the defensive end. Now here's Rose. And Zhang kicks the tee. Back to Zhang. Over Deadman. Timberwolves working now with a new shot clock. Two points. That one goes. Now it's a four-point Timberwolves lead. And you talk about fighting your way back into a game. They've shown a lot of grit in this comeback. Yeah, to start off with so many mistakes and still now find a way where everything's working, it allows their momentum and confidence to continue to build. And he shows us all what the breakaway rim <laughs> was invented for. Can you believe he almost brought the whole thing down by hanging on that long? Here is Tolliver. Teague surveying the D. It's tipped, and he recovers it. The shot's good. The Hawks trail by four. Outside, Lynn kicks it to Collins. Herter, T covering. Deadman in the high post. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Deadman's got five points in the quarter. On the attack, he has that ability, trying to close this one out. I'll tell you, that's the killer instinct you need to have. You love the attacking mentality near the cup. Now here's Rose. The shot from the low post is good. Rose has got the lead up to four now for the Timberwolves. Boy, they are not locked in defensively here in the second half. Timeout, the intensity timeout. and focus haven't been there. Atlanta calls timeout. And at this point of the game, getting a break here, important for the teams to regroup and for the players. This is where you have a chance to get rehydrated with Gatorade. Get ready to play strong to finish off the game. The Timberwolves making a switch here. Wiggins has checked in. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Thank you, guys. I got a chance to listen in on what Lloyd Pierce was saying to the team. He wants to change it up defensively and get more people packed into the paint. He said they're beating us up down low. We have to put a stop to it. Let's see if they respond, Kevin. Now here's Rose. After the miss from Trey Young. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Hey, Andrew Wiggins, the number one overall pick back in 14. Great bloodlines, the son of pro athletes. The game just seems to come easy to him. You know, Greg, the game comes so easy to Wiggins, but some say he needs to be more assertive, more aggressive. Do you see that? I mean, high expectations for a player that was taken Gentlemen, first overall. The length and athleticism should enable him to impact the game in so many ways, but, you know, his motor doesn't always rev high enough to take advantage. And he knocks down the first one. Well, getting to the line at will nowadays. Wiggins wanting to improve his free throw percentage. And he makes the first but misses the second. Year after year, the Timberwolves have the NBA's most grueling travel schedule. A lot of miles to cover in the West. Kevin, if you add up their flights in a season, they could circle the globe more than twice. And let's remember, there's no frequent flyer miles here either. Lynn's shot is off. Well, this is a tough night so far. They'd be smart to rely more on a couple of their other options. Rose with the ball. Top of the key, Tolliver. The Timberwolves again can't hit. 
You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Baysmore against Wiggins. Baysmore gets the bucket. Here's T. He kicks it to Jang. Pass to Wiggins. The Timberwolves again can't hit. The Hawks trail by three. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Carl Anthony Towns checked in for Minnesota. And a switch here also for Atlanta. Torian Prince, he's checked in for Jeremy Lin. Prince against Wiggins. To tie it up. Prince misses. And a really smart defender there. He just reads the play, wastes no time trying to blow it up. Almost like he was anticipating the play call, right? You love the hustle. And the action on hold, as it appears there's been an injury. Yep, he's definitely in a bad way out there right now. Tough to see. And boy, this really doesn't look good. That Just the way it happened. Boy, it's got to be so frustrating for him. As hard as he has worked, doing everything he can to help his team. Just heartbreaking, Greg. Justin Anderson, he's checked in for Atlanta. Two shots. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And the first one drops. And you look at Jeff Teague, now with a decade in the league out of Wake Forest. Greg, what does he bring to the table aside from the fact that he's been in the playoffs every single year of his career? Yeah, I mean, he's an explosive slasher and really has grown as a playmaker. Not, not a star, but a quality starting point guard. And so Teague gets two free throws. Uh, and, Kevin, this is why Teague is such a valuable player. You know, he's a solid shooter from anywhere, so he's able to space the defense. He can, with his handle, get inside the paint. There's a lot to like about Jeff Teague. Down low. And it's Rose. This time, the assist by Wiggins. Wiggins has got six assists in the game. If you're going in amongst the trees, you have got to be aggressive. Well, he went all in there. He embraces the challenge and somehow finishes with the layup. Now here's Anderson. The kick out to Young. Good on the triple. Knocks that one down. Four triples for the night. Three in the first half. Timberwolves leading by four. Outside Rose. There's the feed to Towns. And stolen by Dedman. Pays more inside the three-point line. Rose with the rebound. Maybe not that time, but he'll hit more than his share if he's left open. Here's Wiggins. Detman with the block. They recover it. Back to Towns. It's Detman with the rebound. Detman's got 14. Yep, 14 rebounds for him tonight. Wow. Paysmore with it. Picked up by Teague. Here's Anderson. It's rebounded by Towns. Towns has got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. Here's Teague. Towns dishes to Teague. Good, and the assist goes to Towns. Towns has got four assists in the game. You know, after a first half of poor shooting, he is turning up the heat now. Young passes to Anderson. The Hawks working the ball around. It's good. Young's got five points now this quarter. Yeah, and this is Young at his very best. Once he gets a few to fall, boy, watch out. And the call will be against Justin Anderson. That's his first foul. Jimmy Butler, he's checked in for Jeff T. And a change for the Hawks. Lens checked in.
Atlanta on D. Here's Butler. And good! He nails it. Butler's got 16 points here in the second half. Boy, great rhythm on the jumper. Every year, Butler gains more and more confidence in that catch-and-shoot game. Len finds Young. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Boy, picking up where he left off. His second from distance this half. Five overall. Outside Butler. Here is Tolliver. Deadman defending. The inside just a bit too congested for him to get the usual shot he would have with rhythm. Well, despite his struggles from the field in this period, you know he's going to keep asking for the basketball. Butler kicks to Rose. Towns against Len. Stolen by Len. There's the pass to Deadman. Butler with the steal. Outside Rose. Butler up top. Passes it to Towns. Ring shot on the way. And that one off the back of the rim and in. Towns has got 29. There's such confidence and belief and faith in his offensive arsenal that Carl Anthony Towns makes it look easy on that end. Now, here is Young, and the rejection by Towns. Here's Butler, and he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. In Andrew Wiggins uh, and Jimmy Butler, two pretty different stories for these Timberwolf teammates. About as opposite as you could get in terms of your entry into the NBA. Andrew Wiggins, the former number one overall pick. Jimmy Butler, the 30th pick. Wiggins is the son of professional athletes, a blue chip prospect. Shoot Butler's two. background, a guy who's had to scrap and claw his way every step of the way. So interesting to see how these two grow together and work together to help this team win. Free throw, good Butler. Well, what you love about Jimmy Butler to me is he can carry an offense. He can also affect the game with his high level defense. That is the rarest of rare combinations. Minnesota making a switch here. Teague's checked in. Collins checked in for Atlanta. Jeremy Lin comes in for Anderson. He's perfect from the line this time. And here's Young. He'll bring it up for the Hawks. They trail by seven. Now here's Collins. Len high post. And there's the call on Carl Anthony Towns. That is his first foul of the game. He's more for three. He's cold from deep. Zero threes in the second half after hitting just one in the first. A chance here to get a quick injury report. Let's check in with David Aldridge for an injury update on Torian Prince. David. Hi, guys. The head athletic trainer for the Hawks provided us with some information. He told me that the injury appears to be a strained Achilles. That's the end of his night, and he could be out for a while. Not the news he wanted to hear, Kevin. All right, David, thanks. Well, guys, certainly not the news his fans were hoping for. Yeah, not at all. I mean, it sounds like he's got a long road ahead of him in terms of his recovery. And our hearts go out to him. The guy works so hard. His teammates love him. Coaches love him. He's going to be missed. The Hawks trail by nine. Here's Young. Pass to Bazemore. The putback controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. And the second chance points haven't come as easily to them as they did in that first half. Those are valuable points they're missing out on. Now here's Butler. Five on the clock. Towns at the elbow. Shoots over Len. Offensive rebound. The kick out to Towns. Moves back up. 
Outside Butler. The three sinks the three-pointer. Butler's got seven points here in this quarter. Jimmy Butler's effectiveness as a scorer includes that three-point line. You've got to cover him out there. In the corner, Baysmore with it. Boy, he just hasn't been able to get his shot to fall. Here's Towns. Kicks to Teague. And that one goes out of bounds. Last nice touch by Teague. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions right now. They need a basket. And that's really a function of the offense not working as it should. Yeah, no, exactly. That's not how you capitalize on the offensive end. You simply have to be more patient. Now, here's Butler. Outside Teague. Clock at four. Lays it up off the glass. And it's a 12-point Timberwolves lead. Well, you can just see Jeff Teague oozes confidence anytime he's got to use the dribble drive. I love watching him do that. Pays more against Butler. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Hawks will retain possession. And these are the types of games where one team clearly has the edge. Tonight, it will be a win by a large margin for the Timberwolves. Free throws were a big factor in this one. You know, it's always great to get a lot of shots at the line, but the key they were able to convert tonight. You start making free throws, and it can get you the win. And a milestone win for the season. This will push their victory total to 20 wins even. And with the win approaching, they'll take the first game here of two that they'll play against this team. Nice to get that first one out of the way and set the tone. And we watched one guy all night long, guys. And look at the stats. Just confirms what a dominant game he had. What a night tonight it was for Jimmy Butler. I think his steals tell the story. This guy was a disruptive force, and I don't think you can underestimate how important it is for a team to have someone in that role. 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter. They get a hand on it. Now T. He kicks it to Jang. Here's Jones. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. And the Timberwolves lead by 14. And that's a killer instinct on display as they try to put this one on ice. I think that's exactly the mentality you have to have. You don't want to give this team any hope of coming back. Oh, perfect timing there to knock down the teardrop. Outside Teague. So it's Minnesota winning this one easy. Even early on in this one, it seemed like they were happy to be playing at home tonight. And it makes a big difference. Once they started to really play in rhythm, you never felt like they had any doubts as to whether or not they were going to win. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Luol, huge win tonight. How did you get this done? You know, we locked in. We locked in. Um, we knew how good they were. And uh, we know when we're at our best, we could beat anybody. Uh, when we lock in like that, we're hard to beat, too. Well, you led the way, Luol. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harland. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.